This is the News Leader, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Tonight, the aftermath of Floyd, he may be gone, but he is far from forgotten as hundreds of thousands of people remain flooded out without power, without phone service, and with little idea of when they'll be able to go back home. Good evening. I'm Bill Butel. And I'm Diana Williams. At this time last night, we had no idea whatsoever that Tropical Storm Floyd would do so very much damage to our area. All it took, though, was one look at daylight to see that New Jersey and parts of New York are disaster areas. The fallout from Floyd is felt hardest in New, G New Jersey, where in the community of Bound Brook, people had to be rescued from their flooded homes by helicopters and boats all day long. The water is so high in Lodi, New Jersey, many streets have been closed down to cars. And in Rockland County, overflowing creeks have taken their toll on that area, in one case almost pulling a home off its foundation. We have the entire area covered, beginning with New Jersey. Lucy Yang is live in Bound Brook. Good evening, Lucy. Good evening, Bill. The waters are beginning to pull back. Streets are beginning to dry. But in certain areas, the best mode of transportation remains a boat, as some streets are still deep enough to drown a child. Now, power is still out in the flooded areas, and there are still scattered fires in this community which firefighters cannot access because of all the water. As residents come to grips with this nightmare, I have to tell you, going through Boundbrook at times is surreal. Earlier this evening, I saw a fish swimming down a residential street. We went out with the Port Authority police tonight on board their rafts to survey the damage. These are just snapshots of the loss to this community. The local watering hole, a washout. The bike shop, the auto parts store torn apart. While the water is beginning to drain, at times we were best off wading through the streets. The fact is, it is still a mess. Cars remain submerged. Too bad they couldn't float like this child's toy truck. Front yards converted to moats. Fences as frail as a house of cards. Homes themselves not much more stable. The soccer field now fit for water polo as massive flooding ravaged this borough. For better or worse, this young couple went ahead with their wedding rehearsal tonight. On the eve of their big day, the only light in the church came from the Port Authority's generator. At shelters, there was nothing to celebrate as families lost all their worldly possessions. I got over 10 feet of water when I left my house. They wouldn't let, I couldn't take my cat. <laughs> my kids are devastated. With parts of New Jersey declared a federal disaster area, Governor Whitman tried to lend a consoling hand to the now homeless, but there are no words of comfort at a time like this. And stand ready and able to assist people, the Department of Health and Senior Services, with insurance questions, with uh, temporary housing which I'm afraid for some people is going to be longer rather than shorter term temporary housing. It has been one dramatic rescue after another. At least 800 victims have been saved from the rising waters. One fellow hanging onto a drum for dear life, others flagging down help from their rooftops. They use choppers, they use boats. A kayak became this best friend's best way out. What you're looking at is bubbling water in the middle of an intersection here, and that is where the water is draining out here on Talmadge Avenue. Already the flood of 99 is turning into a sea of a thousand sad tales. Governor Whitman today spoke already of two deaths, an elderly man and woman both in their 80s claimed by the floods. One rescue worker told me this evening they fear the worst is yet to come. The streets are expected to dry up by tomorrow, and that's when they will go door to door searching for any more possible bodies inside these homes. We're live in Boundbrook tonight. Lucy Yang for ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Lucy. Other parts of New Jersey were not spared the fallout from Floyd. The problem everywhere does seem to be the flooding, as you saw from Lucy and Lodi. Elderly people stranded in their homes by floodwaters were actually evacuated by boat, many of them wearing life preservers. And in Piscataway, one man whose car was stranded in high waters actually climbed in on the roof to get inside of his car. Others had to bail out the water in their cars with cups. In New York, the governor is asking for federal help. Between 12 and 16 inches of rain fell on some parts of the lower Hudson Valley. Tomorrow, Governor Pataki will tour storm-damaged areas, but today he declared a state of emergency for severely damaged areas, and he has asked President Clinton to declare parts of the state disaster areas. What we are doing now is we have more than 1,000 National Guard troops working with local and other officials, and we're confident we're going to get through this. Rockland County was one area that was hard hit by Floyd's fury. The storm downed trees, flooded streets, and caused power outages that continue even tonight. N.J. Burkett has more on that part of the story. 
the people of Piermont, New York, woke up and found their entire village caked in mud. When I first saw it when I came home, I thought, oh my God, it looks like a California earthquake. I couldn't believe it. The force of the storm sent one family's backyard sliding downhill into the backyard of their neighbors. All of a sudden I heard this popping and cracking from on the mountain and I seen the trees starting to wobble. And next thing I know, it just turned into mud and came down. The huge mudslide tumbled into the center of town where public works crews shoveled out the streets and neighbors shoveled out their driveways. In my 42 years, I've never seen anything like this. Damages, I would estimate probably in the millions for the village of Piermont. Uh, it's going to take us quite some time to, uh, to extract ourselves out of this. The storm's raw power was frightening. Floodwaters blew apart this dam in Spring Valley. And this morning, two miles downstream, police recovered the body of a 53-year-old man who had been walking home after his car stalled. This morning, Governor Pataki appealed for federal disaster aid. The storm uprooted 300-year-old trees. This church was nearly destroyed. Huge power lines went down. 